This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. So, I've been looking at the results from the general election in the United Kingdom this week, and it seems that I got the general gist correct, even if I missed a bit on some of the party splits. The House of Commons now rests securely in the hands of a Boris Johnson majority. It would seem to be time for some roasted opinions, but since I've just covered this, it's time for a roast reheat on the UK general election 2019. I thought that you should know that I took my time analyzing everything before I made my predictions, pulling up polling data for every constituency in the United Kingdom and reviewing each contest individually, all 650 of them. I still don't understand why each constituency voted the way it did, but trust me, I know how each party did on Thursday. As should be the case, reporting on electoral results is limited in the United Kingdom until after polling stations close, lest that reporting affect voter turnouts and in turn the results of the election. That means that where I live, I had to wait until 4 p.m. to see the first report. The meltdown among Labour supporters started then, with the exit poll predicting a conservative majority of 86 with 368 seats going to the Tories and Labour projected to lose 71 seats. The shadow ministers in the Labour Party immediately began to field questions about Corbyn's leadership of the party as well. It took some time, but after watching the results come in most of the night, here's how my predictions held up. In Northern Ireland, I received my biggest surprises. While my prediction of 8 DUP seats and 7 empty seats for Sinn Féin held, I predicted that the other three seats would go to the Alliance Party. The Social Democrat and Labour Party actually took two of those three, with the Alliance only getting one seat. I missed the SDLP entirely, folks, and I readily admit it. I predicted Plaid Cymru's four seats exactly, but three seats which I believed would remain Labour seats selected Tories instead to represent them. That made 14 seats to 22 instead of 11 seats to 25, a bit out of my predictions as well. Northern Wales is the western anchor of the Red Wall, the United Kingdom's political equivalent of the Rust Belt, and that's where those extra Tory seats came from. Ah, Scotland. I predicted 45 seats for the SNP, and they took 48 instead. Well, 47, really. Neil Hanvey won his seat despite being kicked out of the SNP too late to change the name on the ballot. The Lib Dems did manage to hold on to four seats, although not all of them were the same seats. More on that later. The Tories supplied the slippage, only returning six seats instead of nine as I predicted, and Labour got the one that I guessed that they would get. Naturally, the SNP declared that the result was a mandate for a second independence referendum. They will easily retain their position as the third biggest party in Commons, which will leave us thoroughly entertained for years to come by Ian Blackford's two questions every Wednesday. Do the Tories intend to allow the SNP to do whatever they want on the current issue of the day? And his standard follow-up, That's just not good enough. When will the Prime Minister schedule a second independence referendum? Always good for a laugh, the Honourable Member for Ross Sky and Lockaber. In England, the final tally was one green seat from Brighton Pavilion, exactly as I expected, and one speaker's seat. Congratulations, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, and good luck. I didn't include Change UK and the other independents in the tallies, and it seems that I was right about that. Neither the Brexit Party nor UKIP gained a seat in Commons, and all of the independents, including the Change UK candidates, were removed from office. Now, the Lib Dems only came up with 7 seats instead of 11, like I guessed, and Labour came up a further 18 seats short as more of that red wall crumbled. The Tory campaign to pick up seats in the Midlands worked like a charm, and I have to congratulate their campaign managers. St. Ives took a while to return their results. Stormy weather prevented the submission of the counts from the Scilly Islands to the mainland. 
It went Tory and honestly didn't change the results much, despite the delay. My predictions were off by 23 conservative seats, 21 labor seats, 3 SMP seats, 4 Lib Dem seats, 2 Alliance seats, and 2 SDLP seats. Not exactly accurate, but overall, the balance of power is exactly as I predicted, a majority government for Boris Johnson. Remember how the Lib Dems were supposed to be on their way up with those 10 former Tories jumping across the aisle to join their party? Well, that was at least until the election was called. The floor-crossing members couldn't hold their seats, with just 11 seats going for the party of endless referendums, exactly back where they started before the aisle crossing happened. Jo Swinson should have done more to hold on to her party's momentum in Commons, but I think that she may have forgotten about that in her desperation to hold on to her own seat. At least Corbyn and Blackford remain MPs, while many of the remain MPs will be looking for new jobs, including Joe Swinson, who lost her seat to the SMP. Thanks, Joe. I never wanted to see Nicola Sturgeon dancing again. Jeremy Corbyn didn't even make it to the end of the night before he announced that he would not lead Labour into the next election nor before he reversed himself partially and stated that he would retain leadership for the present, a position which he further clarified by stating that there will be a new Labour Party leadership election next year. I think, Jeremy, that your fellow Labour members might have a bit to say about it. You've just lost nearly 60 seats from the 2017 election to the 2019 election. Clement Attlee had a good reason for his low returns. What's your excuse? But the triumph of the night was Boris Johnson and the Tories. Congratulations, Boris. You've got your mandate. Now go get Brexit done so that you can ink a great trade deal with the U.S. and your Commonwealth partners. We're waiting. 